Passionate, driven, enthusiastic, euphoric. This is who we are as entrepreneurs, but how we leverage these incredible attributes to dream and build businesses that scale and grow is what this podcast is all about. Hello, I'm attorneypreneur Josh Brown, and welcome to Franchise Euphoria. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Franchise Euphoria, the podcast where we are focused on providing strategy, education, and consulting to the incredible and growing franchise community. Welcome, everyone. Josh Brown here. Hope everyone is doing fan freaking tastic. Today on Franchise Euphoria, Josh dives into personalities and disguises. In segment two of today's show, Josh asks, is your business a franchise in disguise? There are many ways to expand your business, such as licensing and franchising. Is your business ready to burst onto the franchising scene? Coming up in our first segment, Josh gets up close and personal talking about personality. He asks the tough question, is your personality holding you back from success? Is your personality holding you back? from business success. You know, personality is such an interesting and often overlooked area when people are thinking about buying a franchise, expanding their business into a franchise, or just getting into business in general. I think we're so conditioned as a culture um, to just be focused on bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, that we sometimes forget that when we buy a business or when we grow a business, we do it through part of who we are and what we bring to the table. And just because a business is profitable at the end of the day, I'm not so sure that that's ultimately a success. I mean, it, it, it brings me back to, to a quote that I recently uh, read from Earl Nightingale, uh, who wrote the incredible book, The Strangest Little Secret. And um, he says, quote, success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal, end quote. Let me say that again. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. And so it got me thinking about when people pursue business goals that don't actually align with their personality or their personal goals. I mean, is that really a business success? Um, it was actually Dan Miller who wrote uh, the New York Times bestselling book, 48 Days to the Work You Love and When Wisdom Meets Passion. A few other books. I'm, I'm part of a, fortunate to be part of a mastermind group with Dan. And he sent me um, the book by Earl Nightingale. And I, I had never read it before, even though it's very well known and very well read. And I just love that definition of success. And it got me thinking about, is your personality holding you back from business success? And defining success as the progressive realization of a worthy goal or, or ideal. I started thinking about, you know, how do we as entrepreneurs and business owners really identify or figure out whether our personality and our interests are going to align well with our business goals. Well, I have five ways today in which you can identify your unique personality strengths and weaknesses. Number one is simply take a personality test. I mean, gosh, there's tens and tens of tons of them out there. Um, Strength finders. Um, there's one that I particularly like called How to Fascinate uh, by Sally Hogshead. There's disc profiles. I mean, gosh, there's so many different kinds of personality tests out there that not only will measure what your strengths are, but how other people view you and see you. And so I think that's always, always a good exercise um, and a first step to really figure out what your personality strengths and weaknesses are. Number two, you got to take stock 
of what you like to do and what you don't like to do. And I think writing that down is best. I mean, literally, you can just get a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle of the page, and on the left-hand side, write the word like, and on the right-hand side, write the word don't like, and just free-for-all, write down things you like to do and things you don't like to do. Number three, make a written list of the words that best describe you. And oftentimes, we can't pinpoint specifically or in a very articulate way what makes us tick or what we like and what we don't like. And so I think it's a good idea to make a list of words that best describe you. And these can be words that you think of when you think about yourself, but also I would pay really close attention to words that other people use when they describe you. And if you can't think of any or don't know of any from how others have described you, just ask, you know, reach out to your family, reach out, reach out to somebody or to five to 10 people who feel like really know you. You know, it may be your family. It may not. It may be close friends. It may be people you just met. I don't know, but only you know people who really, really know who you are. Reach out to them and ask them to tell you a few words that they think best describes you. I think that's really instructive. Number four, what pace of business suits you? So in other words, getting specific on what kind of business do you want to operate? I mean, a classic example is if you don't like going to going retail shopping or going to retail stores, boy, I would highly recommend that you don't get into the retail business, even if there is a great opportunity there. There will be great opportunities in whatever business you go into if you go through the process of figuring out and matching what works well with your personality and what is a viable, good business model. Number five, know your kryptonite. Know what you hate and avoid it. This sounds rather obvious, but I'm always amazed at the number of people who get into businesses where when you get right down to it, they just really don't enjoy it. And in fact, some of them hate what they do, but they focused so intensely on the bottom line business side of things. And they gave no attention to what they personally wanted to do or what worked well with their personality. So I think if you take those five identifying markers or you do those five things, I think you're going to come away with a pretty good idea of what your personality strengths and weaknesses are. And if you always keep that idea in your forefront and you always understand that you're always going to measure any kind of business opportunity against what your personality strengths and weaknesses are and only give serious thought to opportunities that match well with your personality and with your strength, then your personality will not hold you back from business success. And believe it or not, there are a whole host of people out there that that is the only thing holding them back. You know, they're not in pursuit or the progressive realization of a worthy goal. They're just in pursuit of money. And while I have no problem with making money, trust me, I like to make money just like everyone else. I think if you're going to ultimately find success and realize the worthy goals that matter to you, you're going to do so in a way that works well within your own personality, within your own strengths. And quite frankly, you're going to have a much better opportunity of success when you're doing things that align well with your own personal goals. I mean, we see this time and time again with people and we all know them where you look at them and you go, God, it just, it just seems so easy for them. You know, it just seems they're just having such great success. They love what they do. They get up every day with a, with an enthusiasm and a spirit about them. And I think that's what we all sort of strive for. The reality is the reason they have that is they have been able to align their personality with their business model. And so they have been able to put their best foot forward in every aspect of who they are as a person and marry that with a business 
that coincides and works well with that. And boy, that is the ultimate recipe for a business success. So whether or not you're looking at a franchise to buy, whether or not you're looking to grow your business into a franchise, or whether or not you're just looking to start a business in general, I encourage you to really take the time to take stock of your own personality so that you don't find yourself in the position where your personality is holding you back from business success. Now that you know your strengths and weaknesses, let's figure out if your business is really a franchise in disguise. Today, we're going to talk about something that just keeps popping up over and over and over again. And I love getting the emails on this and love learning about other businesses and what they're doing to grow and scale their own models. But an issue keeps popping up of whether or not the business is going to expand through a traditional licensing model or through a franchise model. What's the difference? And really, it all comes down to, is your business a franchise in disguise? So I'm hearing from a lot of entrepreneurs who have started businesses and they've had some good success. You know, maybe they've been in business for a couple of years now. Um, they've really fine tuned their brand, their product or service, and they've got a steady flow of customers or growing customers. And in, off, in, in many cases, they're in sort of a, a unique niche. And now that they've tasted some of that success, they're now getting people who are reaching out to them and saying, hey, are you going to franchise this? Or I'd like to open up one of those stores. That's usually how the process of turning your business into a franchise starts. I mean, certainly there's exceptions and certainly there's entrepreneurs that have that idea in their head before they even start their business. But there's a lot of entrepreneurs that never even think about it until the topic is raised or brought to them. And then they'll look at, may do some research on franchising. And if anybody's ever done research on franchising online, you will realize very, very quickly that there's a lot of information out there a lot of which you cannot rely on. There's good information. There's bad information. Um, but at the end of the day, you get a sense very quickly that franchising is a complicated process. So to a lot of entrepreneurs, they just don't want to deal with that mess. So they say, look, I'm not going to franchise this business, but I'd be happy to license the business to you. Here's the problem. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And in the eyes of the regulators and the law, they don't care what you call your business. If it meets the elements of a franchise, it's a franchise and needs to be properly regulated and accounted for as such. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the important thing is you have to know the difference. Now, one thing I just want to say off the top, this episode is not going to tell you everything there is about knowing for sure whether or not your business is a franchise or a license. I wish I could do that in an episode. It's just impossible. I don't know your personal situation. This is just a general uh, discussion um, and information that based on my experience, I want to give some pointers. And I think a, one really key pointer that will at least get you thinking about whether you and your business are in this situation. And if so, you definitely should seek out professional help um, to clarify things and make sure that going forward, if you want to avoid being a franchise, you, you do so the right way. Or if you want to be a franchise, you do so the right way. So to start the whole conversation off, I mean, I think we should start from the premise of what is a franchise? I mean, I've talked about this on, on prior episodes. I think people, when they think of a franchise, typically think of McDonald's, Subway, um, the sort of the traditional fast food restaurants. And those are franchises, but franchising runs across every sector of the economy. And if you look at the broad definition of what a franchise is, I mean, it's, it's essentially when you as a business owner grant the right, grant a license. I mean, a franchising is a type of license. It's like a super license. Um, you're granting the right for somebody else to sell your goods or services using your name 
and that's your trademark, your logo, your brand, following your marketing operating plan and in exchange for a fee. So let me say that one more time. So essentially a franchise is when you are licensing the right over to somebody else to utilize and to sell your goods and services under your brand or trademark following your marketing or operating system in exchange for a fee. That's a franchise in a nutshell. And as you can imagine, boy, that's, that's, that's not too specific. I mean, there's a lot of things that could fall under that category. And the reality is, is that what people tend to look at to determine whether or not your business is a franchise or is not a franchise, if those elements are met, you know, maybe there's a component of them are, that are met, is really control. I mean, how much control are you going to assert over somebody who buys into your business? Or if you are, let me give you an example. I think it's always easier to, to just kind of give an example as opposed to just speak in general, general terms. Let's say you're Joe's candy shop and you set up a nice little candy shop. You've got good customers. You've got a nice little niche. And you now get people, you have a shop on the north side of town, and now you have somebody who approaches you and says, hey, Joe, I'd love to open up a shop on the south side of town. Are you franchising? And maybe you never really thought about it. And you go, you know what? I, I really don't want to franchise. I don't want to deal with all the regulations. I don't want to go hire an attorney. I don't want to do all that stuff. Um, why don't you and I just kind of put together a little deal ourselves? I'll give you the right um, to open up a shop on the south side. You can use my name. You know, you'll pay me a little bit of a fee up front and I'll kind of show you how I do things. And um, we can just do that ourselves and just kind of see how that works and, and, uh, and set everything up that way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just set yourself up as a franchise, even though you're not going through a franchise agreement, you haven't regulated your business as a franchise. Um, and so, but you've met the characteristics in a broad sense of what a franchise is. And so in order to avoid that scenario, you have to eliminate one of those elements. Oftentimes, people will do that through a licensing model instead of a franchise model. And the principal difference comes down to control. I mean, a lot of times in a licensing model where you basically, let's say you create a system or you create a process and you're licensing that process to somebody else, but you're doing it in a way to where they can utilize that system and process in their own business to make their business better. And they're not necessarily doing it to dispense your goods or services, or they're not doing it under your brand name or your trademark, but they are giving you a, a fee. They are potentially paying you a royalty, but they don't meet the element of doing it under your brand. And you're essentially letting them do it how they want it. So they're not doing it under your marketing or operating system. You don't have the control over how they operate. I sort of think about it in terms of like the difference between an independent contractor and employee. I mean, it's always a, it's always a fact sensitive analysis, but a lot of it comes down to how much control are you asserting over the people who are working for you? It's the same kind of thing with the franchise business. You know, if you're the type of person where you want to have total control over your business as you expand and you want to be able to control um, your and build upon your brand and you want to make sure that other people who are using your brand operate it in a certain way so that it, they don't screw it up and so they don't give you a bad name and you're charging them a fee to do it and you're essentially walking them through how to be successful with your business, with your brand name, under your brand name, that's a franchise and that's a lot of control that you're asserting over them. However, if you expand and you allow somebody to utilize your system or you have a product that you're gonna license over to them, that you're not real particular 
in how they sell it, what they do with it, you're most concerned with the notion that they're just going to license it from you. They're going to pay a fee and you're sort of just going to wash your hands of it. You know, they can do what they want with it. They can sell it the way uh, in which they want, obviously within certain parameters, but you have less control over the process. You haven't provided them with a roadmap of exactly from A to Z, how they're going to create and grow and build their own business off of your brand. Okay. Well, that's more of a license, but I hope what I'm doing here is I hope I'm painting the picture of the distinction between a franchise and a license. And so in a lot of situations, um, entrepreneurs and small business owners find themselves where in a, where the excitement of growth and scale can kind of take over and they move quickly and they say, oh yeah, this person's interested. I need to jump on this opportunity because I don't know how long somebody's going to be interested in my business or if this opportunity is going to go away. And so they just very quickly try to put something together and start franchising their business. That is a big, big no, no. Um, there is an absolute process you need to go through. Um, franchising is regulated by the federal government. It's also regulated by many States, um, not all States, um, but definitely a certain number of States. And there's other things you need to be concerned with. I mean, when you are thinking about setting up a, a franchise business. It's not something that you take lightly. It's not something that you decide overnight. I really encourage people to think about franchising, to think about licensing, to think about expanding just through your own corporate model. I mean, I think a perfect, probably the best example I can give of that would be Starbucks. I mean, a lot of people think Starbucks is a franchise and it's not. I mean, it is corporately owned. Every single Starbucks is corporately owned and they have strategically chosen to do that because they want the ultimate control over their brand. I mean, they want to control the people who are managing their stores. They want to control the employees. They want, they don't want to put themselves in the position of having franchisees, which obviously they would have control over because the franchisees are going to be following their brand, their system. But for whatever reason, Starbucks has chosen to expand under a, just a general corporate structure where they own all of their locations as opposed to other people coming in as franchisees and owning them. I think that one of the other things that you need to consider when you're making this determination about your business and when you are thinking about how you want to grow your business is what, what in your mind is your end game? In other words, does it excite you to think about building a business where you're going to develop a larger, well-known brand across many geographic locations? If that's the case, you really want to give a lot of strong thought to franchising. But if you're not, if that really doesn't appeal to you and you've just found success with maybe your model or your system, then and other people are approaching you and saying, hey, I want to get into your business and I see that you found success. How do you do it? Well, that's a perfect opportunity to license your system to somebody else. And so, you know, let's say, you know, whatever the business is, you know, somebody comes to you and you own, you know, a cookie store or whatever, a candy store, whatever it is. And someone says, gee, I want to open up my own candy store and I'm not going to call it Joe's candy shop. I'm going to call it Josh's candy shop. But I see that you know how to run a candy store, Joe. I see that within the last two years, you've built up a really nice business. And if you're interested, I'd love to, to learn about your system and possibly license that system from you. So in other words, you, Joe, can then put together a structure where you're just licensing out your system and how you run things, but they're not going to use your brand name. They're going to almost white label it and use their own name, but they're going to follow your exact system. 
Well, there's benefits and detriments to that. I mean, obviously you're in one sense helping the competition, but you're also strategically placing yourself where you're benefiting from the competition as well. So it's impossible for me to go through every kind of scenario during an episode like this. I just want to highlight the idea that there's many businesses out there that believe that they can avoid being a franchise by just not going through the process of turning them into a franchise. And that could not be further from the truth. If it looks like a franchise, if it meets the elements of a franchise, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's a franchise. Hopefully this was helpful for you today. If you are in the market for a franchise, I would highly encourage you to check out my free ebook, which is what to know before you buy a franchise. You can head over to my website at Indie, that's I-N-D-Y, FranchiseLaw.com and download it there for free. And um, let me know what you think. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're enjoying the value that you're getting from this podcast, I'd also invite you to Go to iTunes and uh, provide me with a rating and review. It always helps uh, for visibility on the podcast. So thank you so much for your support and uh, hope this episode was helpful to you. Thanks for being with us today on the Franchise Euphoria podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to go to iTunes and provide a review. Also, please remember that although Josh Brown is a licensed and practicing attorney, nothing contained in this podcast should be construed as legal advice, because it is not. The information contained in this podcast is general and educational in nature, and none of it should be relied upon as legal advice. That being said, if you have questions for Josh and would like to contact him, please email him at josh at franchiseuphoria.com. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you tune in to our next weekly episode.